Hi guys, it's Vinit from 39K. Hi, it's Ryan from 39K. And today we'll be doing an explanation of our robot this past season. So we did pretty good. We made it to finals, but we lost in finals, unfortunately. Power Beans. Power Beans OP. But yeah, so I'll just start off with our explanation of our drivetrain. So we went for a 6 in RPM because, you know, speed, I like speed. And basically, as you can see, we only have two wheels on each side. The reason for this is literally just to save weight because extra wheels is extra weight. And we didn't really see any issues with like sinkage in the ground just because our robot was so light. And then to our track mills right here. So we were supposed to have two track mills, but in finals two, our track mill broke and then it snapped off and we didn't have pieces to put it back. So in finals three, uh, unfortunately, we crossed Auton because of that and we lost Auton. So it was kind of unfortunate. And in terms of like positioning our motors for our drivetrain, we just had it really nicely packed together. So shout out to 8A and 9A for this motor placement in the middle. So I got the idea from there. And yeah, so a really nice thing we used is these plastic collars right here. Um, instead of like buying them, we literally just like made them ourselves. So we just took a 0.25 inch spacer, drilled it out and then put the collar screw in there. These, we use this all around the robot for like low pressure situations. And this really just allows us to save weight on the robot. And like, yeah, we use like plastic nuts and screws all around. So yeah, going to our intake, we had a pretty standard intake, just one motor, nothing too crazy. 600 RPM first layer, 600 RPM second stage. You know, we have the standard ramps down here. And you want to flip it over. So like... We have these wheels down here, which was really nice because it stopped us from getting stuck in the ground from the hooks. Like this, these intake ramp from getting stuck in the ground is just glide on the ground. It just has barely clearance from the bottom of the ground. So it can always just slide on the ground without us getting stuck inside. And in terms of doinkers, we had just two normal doinkers right here. This allowed us to get um, the two rings from the middle. It works pretty consistently until finals three. Yeah, when the we crossed yeah. and you know track and wheel, but yeah, it worked pretty well. Like we hit six rings, like full goal a few times, like four or five other times. So our autons were very consistent. Other than that, then we have a little tongue mech right here just to get the third ring from the stack. You know, shout out, shout out, shout out to Aaron right here. Okay. Uh, saved us through all of Qual's elums mm -hmm. until finals. Yeah, so interesting, cool. Thing about our um later bound here is that first it's direct but when we have a rotation sensor right here but it's also pivoting right here so this allows us to um basically more easily load into a robot so it, we have a hard stop right here so it can't go down even more and basically it just goes nicely in a robot so we have this compression fit here we have foam tape right here and then we have this mesh right here it's Ready? also a, on a cut one by ones so that gives the strength of a C channel. It's actually a little lower than a C channel, but it gives enough strength for us to actually build our entire structure as a later round a little bit. Yeah, there's a lot of robots to be really light. So yeah. yeah, and we use like, you know, plastic collar right here. Keep it light. And then, you know, it's the standard, this like wall stakes aligner. It was honestly, it wasn't the best, probably better if it was straight line, but our CNC broke like for the past month. So we didn't have really something to use but then you know we got the new jeans stickers here we're locked he's locked so yeah you want to talk about the sensors yeah uh so sensors let's just talk about this first uh, so standard uh rotational sensor for the lady brown uh i don't want to do like the reset stuff and like so it, that's annoying so i just have this and um we have we actually have two we have two uh color sensors here uh, what I should have done is the, um, the 2011B BarkBot tech where like you just like uh, down the refresh rate to like 3 milliseconds but I didn't realize that so we just initialized these like 10 milliseconds uh, like have them off offset 10 milliseconds off of each other so um, this detects and that detects and that detects and, and when either of one detects uh, either one of them detects it waits until the hook goes on the top and reverses for 100 million, uh, 150 milliseconds and uh, that ejects the ring out. And secondly, uh, we another another weight safe tech uh, is we zip tied our uh, inertial sensor there. It, uh, it hasn't worked since a uh, spin up. We did this since spin up and uh, it's scuffed, but it works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like, um, it's time on our I guess, intake right here. We have this little uh, cutout right here. So the hole right here with the zip tie and this, just a rubber band. 
This is allows our hooks to be stable because ours is like spaced up a little bit because of this screw head right here. So a lot of teams, this will be like shaking around a bit, but it's very stable because of this piece here, which allows us to have very consistent scoring right here. And you know, we got those custom flexible inserts just to save weight. These got plastic collars right here just to save weight. Like all around, just a bunch of weight saving stuff to keep things light. And then going into our Mogomech, so we, this is a class two lever, so it gives a lot of mechanical advantage. So we try to keep our pistons as vertical as possible to get the most force. So we use the small pistons because we didn't really need much range of motion right here. So how this has worked is basically, do we have a goal? Yeah, no. there's no air. Oh, that's fine. So basically we had this little piece right here. This would go onto the notch of the goal. So here, I can just put this in here. So as you can see, the, the actual force has actually been put on the side here. And what we noticed is that it's so much easier to tip like this than having like a force come into here. So then Torque. we took it, yeah, just for like, Distance. this is like the radius is larger and stuff like that. So we, our force is actually all put into here. And this piece right here is just to lock into place. So we have no air right now, so Ryan's just gonna hold it in place, but it is like very strong. Uh, it was really hard for a team to like take it out. And this really gave us a really strong fit. So along with Even that- like the California Gold Seals ones, like you just can't pull it out. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah it's, it's impossible to take out basically. So we had these aligners right here. We had this literally same plastic piece like through the whole season because this works so well for us. We just like, just cut this plastic a little bit for this robot. Basically like, even if you're like misaligned or something, it is like this align itself using these free spinning face spacers at the bottom. You know, we use like some plastic screws for those too, like the long ones. And then um, one thing we tried out for our this high stern axle right here. So as you can see from the bottom, we actually shaved off half of it. And for our first practice match in Worlds, yeah. um, basically the idea behind that was basically um, if it's tilted down like this, you can still grab it. But it caused some issues where like the rings get stuck underneath it too. So in our first practice match, we actually just got stuck in a ring. So we switch it off. But you know what? It's like saved like a lot of weight, like half the weight of a high, high center axle without making it like weaker, really. So at the end of the day, it worked, still worked out pretty well. So yeah, we just use these plastic collars here and here just to save weight, just custom some stuff. And then, yeah, and then, you know, the six ring or anything here. Uh, a lot of like standard stuff on a robot. We have these custom, I don't know, these are not legal anymore, but we have these custom uh, 3D printed license plates. So the nice things about these is we won't be losing license plates because literally um, we can just flip it over and then we can just switch colors. So we never really have to like scramble to grab our license plates, which is really nice. Yeah. And like all around the robot, we just try to save weight wherever possible. Oh, these as well. Oh yeah. These like actually like, these press the, the ring against the, the, um, the second stage here. Uh, a lot of teams have shorter ones, like shorter second stages. So it isn't really an issue where the ring falls out. But we have such a long stage and like these really help us like uh, help with uh, the intake's consistency really. Yeah, like as you can see, like the, the bar that our um, intake is mounted on is literally the lowest possible it can be. And the reason we did this is basically for the ring to be mostly on the second stage of our intake. Just because we will have full control of it because we'll know the position in, in the code. We have the position of the hooks at all times because we start like this, like right in front of the, yeah, the sensors, hooks um, the right here before each mat. So we know exactly where each hook is. So this gives us more control of the robot, like the rings at all times. It allows us to less rely on like the reliability of the ramp. So literally, even if we didn't have a first stage intake, like if this is up, the ring can literally glide in and go into the intake. It was just really nice, just in case like our first stage breaks or something. Uh, but we, that not, never actually happened to us, which is good. Yeah. yeah, so that's like some other like small things here. You know, we have these like small ramps right here just to get the bottom ring from the stack. And then this lift right here. So this lift, um, we only really used it for the, the two, two stack in the middle um, because we had this tongue neck here, which just... No, the, it was more consistent. Yeah, it was much more consistent, we realized, because yeah. sometimes when you get the bottom ring, sometimes like some other rings kind of slide out of the stack and you can't get the that third ring. So yeah. it's just really nice. So yeah. Oh yeah, 2011B proposed, uh, well, they ran the, the, the zip ties here for Worlds and I, we feel like, and personally, I feel like that was genius. 
Yeah, so, yeah, that was a pretty good season for us. You know, oh, we, let me talk oh, about yeah. some of the controls. Oh, yeah. So, uh, in pros, there's a, there's a function called like, Rumble. So, this is the, we don't have any air right now, but if, uh, when, when Vini activates the gold, oh, oh, sorry, the gold clamp, the, like, when it's uh, from off to on, the controller actually buzzes. So, even though, like, even when the robot's like, facing away from Vini and Vini couldn't see the, the clamp, he can feel when the when the clamp goes down by literally like, rumbling the, uh, the controller. And also, uh, shout out to 920, no, 99U, I feel like, I think it's 99U. They, uh, the, the shift key, the shift key, oh, what? Okay, so uh, we also use shift keys to uh, to control our lady round manually. I don't know why it's not working anymore. Sure, you're using the wrong thing. Hold okay, on. here you hold this. Right. So basically, like, I have the shift key right here. So this controls our lady round, basically. So what this allows me to do is, like, when I want to, like, do some fine tune thing, like, scoring other people's goals or score like or knock over goals or like flip over goals i can just use this button here to control the lady brown which is really nice so like i had like presets for the lady brown to work but that is for like other stuff like for like loss like alliance stage and stuff like that which is really yeah. nice in the code yeah so one thing i just say is like i drive on break yeah to, like, i know everyone drives on coast but i really thought like break was like really beneficial this year i've been driving on break for like four years but I thought it was like really beneficial just because like you don't you have much more control over, over the robot because in like coast you start like um like skidding basically like especially when you're trying to position yourself for wall stakes i see a lot of teams they like they either like overshoot or undershoot depending on like they have a goal or not and that's not really a problem when you're on break so that this year is really beneficial because you know the goals are like almost like a like a pound so yeah. you, you you like skid differently and that's a really big problem in coast but not really in break so that was really nice for us but if you run a uh, break, please remember to bring uh, cooling or else you'll be cooked for your matches. Yeah, we have to, like between finals, we have to like... Time out. <laughs> yeah, we have to time out and then like uh, just run the fans on them a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's like pretty much on this robot. Like we just like went for a really simple design and it worked out really well for No us. hang. And no hang. Too. No hang finals. Yeah. H from there also ran no hang and made finals. They lost a jar, we lost two power beans. Yeah. yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, it was a great season for us and great time with um, our roles. We didn't really have any issues just because we built such a simple, simple and right robot that like did all the important stuff. So yeah, good luck in- Good luck and push back. Yep. Field. All right,